Hello everyone, my name is Sunny Jane, and uh, today I'll be speaking to you about how a uh, vegan lifestyle bettered my life, both physically and spiritually. Um, so, go ahead. Uh, if you can do the next slide. Yeah. So, a little bit about myself, uh, for those that don't know me, uh, my name is Sunny Jane. Um, pretty much I was born in Ohio, and I moved to Houston about three or four years old. Uh, I went through the whole bachelor system in Houston. Uh, but I never really had a passion for Jainism, you know. I was like the kid that sat in the back of the classroom, you know, and I always, you know, was always distracted, you know, and so my parents used to force me to come to Deirdre every Sunday. Um, you know, over time I made my group of Jain friends, you know, so I had more reason to come. And um, it wasn't really until after I graduated from Bachala where I really, you know, when you're working in the real world and then you start uh, thinking about, you know, the purpose of life and you start, um, discovering a um, interest for religion after that. And so that's just a little bit about myself. Um, been lived here for about 24 years. Um, can you do the next slide? Uh, so my transition into veganism. So, uh, you know, for the last like, I guess five to 10 years, um, I was like that guy that, I was vegetarian, right, by birth. I've always been vegetarian. I never really thought about, you know, animal activism, didn't really do much after that. Um, but, you know, I used to, hold on one second. Let me turn this on. Sorry about that. Um, and so, um, you know, I wasn't really a good chain in the sense where, you know, when you eat like cake and baked goods, that has like eggs in it, right? And so, being raised in America, I never really thought twice about it. I was like, uh, you know, it's okay, it's all that, you know, and so, uh, and then, you know, my family used to do it too. Now we eat like cake, sometimes we don't really think twice about eggs. And so I was like that. Um, and so who here uses WhatsApp? I would say mostly everyone uses WhatsApp, right? And so, you know, I created a WhatsApp, uh, sorry, I joined a WhatsApp group. And um, I remember like this one uncle sent me this link to like, you know, like on WhatsApp, people just send nonsense all day long, right? Just like anything they'll send. <laughs> And so this one uncle sent me like a video of like what happens in a slaughterhouse. And I was just like going through it, I was like, oh my god, you know, like I can't believe someone sent that to me. But watching that video just really changed like how I look at everything, you know. Um, uh, it was a compilation of like small clips uh, from various like slaughterhouses in, a, in the world, you know, I think it was in South America. And, you know, not to get into detail, but when you see these videos and you see like the expressions of the animals and you can like feel their pain, you know, truly. And it was just such a sad thing. And I remember only watching this video once and it was on mute. It wasn't like, uh, you know, just mute, you know, you can imagine how it was with sound, you know, and watching that just really changed everything. I was like almost shocked, you know. And after watching that video, I realized that, you know, being vegetarian isn't enough, you know. It's good being vegetarian is great but I need to do more. I need to do something to help out, you know? Like, I want to make a difference in this world. And, you know, that's when I started thinking about, you know, becoming vegan. Uh, the thing about veganism that we don't understand is the dairy industry and the meat industry are connected side by side. Um, you know, like, uh, and there's a lot of videos and knowledge out there, but you'll realize that these dairy cows, the way they're treated uh, is just very cruel. And when you drink, like, a glass of milk, uh, like none of us would ever hurt a cow, right? No one would ever say that, yeah, you know, I enjoy that. But every time we drink a glass of milk, we're actually annoyingly doing that. You know, we're actually hurting cows. Uh, and we drink, uh, you know, dairy products. Like, I mean, if you think about it, how does a cow make milk, right? It has to be pregnant. How does the cow become pregnant? Uh, well, in America, it's artificially inseminated, meaning that it's not the natural process. They're forcefully made impregnated so they can create milk. Uh, what does that, what happens when a cow stop, you know, can't make milk anymore? They send it to the slaughterhouse, right? And when a cow is pregnant, it has a kid, right? And so what happens to that kid? Well, if it's a male cow, it's sent to the slaughterhouse. If it's a female cow, they repeat the process, you know? So that just is like a piece of like all the cruelty that goes on. And I'm just giving you the basic, you know, I mean, there's a lot of experts that can tell you that these cows are put into like small, like restrained areas and you know they're, they're fed hormones so they make more milk and they're left in dark spaces and like it's just very like a sad and very scary thing but you know you don't you know the information's out there but this presentation is more about me telling you my story 
And so, um, you know, if you have any questions at the end, please feel free to ask out, and we'll uh, continue. But um, so I became vegan, um, and then um, maybe a month later, my mom became vegan. And so, uh, and that was like a very interesting thing because she became vegan in her own pathway. So she became vegan her way, I became vegan my way, and it was just around the same time, you know. Uh, soon after, my dad became vegan uh, by default, you know, because uh, if mom makes the food at home, so my dad's like, okay, I guess I'm part of this too, you know. And so he became vegan, and then uh, finally, my um, uh, my sister became vegan after she graduated from college. And so now, like I can say, you know, probably say my whole family is vegan. And so we're a Jane vegan family now. Um, if you go into my fridge right now, you'll see that it's completely replaced with vegan ingredients. We have vegan butter, vegan sour cream, vegan this, vegan that. We have like four or five cartons of milk in there that's like, you know, plant-based milk. And so it's, you know, it can definitely be done. And I'll get more into that soon. So if you can change the slide. Uh, so this is my family. So anyone that knows me and follows me on social media knows that I have two dogs that I love to death. Uh, there's uh, Rani right there, and there's Raja. <laughs> and I got him in a compromising uh, you know, picture, so I decided to put that up there. Uh, but yeah, these are my dogs, up and um, they're actually vegan as well. And so there's a reason I'm showing this. Uh, you know, there's this big um, misconception that you know, animals have to eat meat. You know, I've actually had a conversation with someone, like, like it was like a non-Indian, and he's like, isn't that like animal cruelty? You know, you're feeding him vegetarian food? I mean, dogs are naturally carnivores. Why would you do that, you know? But my response to him is my response to anyone. And that, you know, when we have pets, we think of them as our family, right? And uh, in Jainism, we believe in reincarnation. We believe in, um, you know, these are all Jeev, right? And they have the potential to do good karma and bad karma, right? And so my, our goal in our family is to live in such a way where they are you know, our values and our karma and our lifestyle, we extend it to our pets as well. And so we want them to be vegetarian, we want them to be vegan, right? Because maybe in their next life, maybe they'll have a better life because of our decision. And so, um, you know, that's how we decided that. So if you click next slide. Uh, and so there's, a, you know, just some pictures of my dogs, you know, there's a, uh, my dog's friend that came to visit, we were babysitting, uh, they could change it. And uh, that's uh, my dog's at Holy, so they participated in Holy as well. And so just to make it like a, uh, a playful you know, presentation, you get to see them. Can we go to the next slide? Uh, oh yeah, so there we go. A lot of dog pictures you'll, you'll understand. Uh, <laughs> you can get the next slide. So plant-based fitness. Um, there's also a misconception that uh, if you're a vegetarian or vegan, that you can't participate in like fitness activities. You know, like they say that we're missing protein. Um, you know, there's a lot of carbs in vegetarian diet. And so there's a lot of misconceptions out there. And um, it's a sad story, but actually I know a Jane friend that started eating meat because he was trying to gain muscle. And so in his mind, he's like, okay, you know, I really want to get strong and muscular. I need the protein. Um, and you know, he, he like grew up Jane too, so it's not like he was, you know, not taught, you know, like the Jane values. But he's like, you know, I need, you know, protein. And so he started eating meat just for that. And uh, when I talked to him, I was just so hurt. I'm like, you know, at least amongst our genes, we should at least try to be vegetarian, right? And so you know, I spoke to him, and I you know I cleared all his misconceptions, any questions he had, and so now he doesn't do it anymore. I'm so grateful for that, you know. Um, so if we go to the next slide, um, one story about me. So people that know me all my life, they know that I haven't always looked this way, you know. Um, I used to be very overweight, and um, in 2016 I lost about 45 pounds. Um, I did this through a vegetarian lifestyle. Um, I wasn't vegan at the time. But going back, I would, have I would have done the same thing, but with the vegan lifestyle. And so um, I love this picture because you can see it's like the same shirt, uh, the same pose, you know, the same gym also. <laughs> you can see like the difference in body. Um, you kind of see like how I look very different from that. Um, can you go to the next slide? And I think this is like a better, uh, better picture of like that, uh, that transformation, you know. Uh, can you go last slide? And so uh, we're here like has been to Mumbai in India. Yeah, so there's a few of them, you know. So there's this place called uh, the uh, Muchar Pan Bhav, right? <laughs> That's a place in India, and it's like a famous pan shop. And uh, pretty much it's a bunch of uncles that have like the mustaches and they sell pan, right? And so that's him right there. <laughs> and you can see I'm as big as him. <laughs> and so just, uh, you know, you can see like how big of a difference it's happened with vegetarian lifestyle, you know? Um, and pretty much when it comes to vegan fitness, um, there's a three, misconceptions first is the protein right and then the second one is um, like fish oil 
they say that oh you have to have fish oil because it has the omegas you know and um and the third one is like whey protein and whey protein is a, a milk-based protein and a lot of people don't realize that there are a lot of plant-based substitutes that you can use instead of whey protein um, you know, it really transformed my body. It was a lot of um, macro counting or calorie counting, they call it. And so, you know, looking at the labels and then counting how many calories you can have in a day, uh, watching your calories, watching your protein. Um, there's like a many ways to do it, to live a healthy lifestyle. Uh, for me personally, it was calorie counting and protein calories, you know, uh, and not, um, not bringing down anyone else's approach to it. But for me, I was able to just do those two things and lose that way. Um, so, Bloods and Jainism, and so I see, you know, it's an older crowd, so I'm sure, you know, I'm not introducing any new ideas, um, but, you know, who, who knows what a brut is in Jainism? Or who, who knows what it means? So you can just speak it out. Uh, it means vow, exactly. Uh, so, you know, when I love this presentation, it was really meant to appeal to the younger crowd, right? Because, like, they're like, brut, you know, what does that mean, you know, American-borns? But brut is a very important um, aspect of Jainism. It's, you know... It's like the physical vow, uh, where you, uh, you, know, you make a vow, and um, it's, well, let me get my notes out for this. So I didn't need to tell now. And so, you know, normally when we think of ruts, uh, we think of hardship, we think of pain, we think of difficulty. It's not like a happy thought, like, rut, wow, you know, I'm excited for this, you know? So normally we think of it that way. But, you know, uh, and some people will think, like, we only live one life, right? Uh, why would I... Why not live life to the fullest, you know? I mean, you know, I'm not gonna be a dating girl in this lifetime, right? So why would I do extra if I can just, you know, live my life, enjoy my food and all that? Uh, but, you know, what we don't realize is all of us here have already taken a breath, and that is vegetarianism. You know, whether you did it knowingly or you were just born that way, we're all doing, we're all vegetarians, and our, the quality of our life hasn't diminished, right? We're not like, man, I wish I could eat meat now, you know? Like, our life is good, and, you know, it's a, we know it's a hinsa based lifestyle, and it's a good life. Um, and so, really, my, my goal for this is that ruts make life more meaningful. You know, it gives you meaning to your life, that you're not just living for yourself, you're living for others as well. You know, you're living for your spiritual progress. And um, in Jainism, it states that it's up to every person to determine the spiritual progress of their life, uh, progress of their soul. So, if you do the next slide. And so following Jainism, once again for the kids, you know. So when we think of Jainism, like practicing Jainism, it's like a punishment, it's like difficult, it's hard. You know, you see this guy right here, he's bored. <laughs> so, uh, you know, that's like what we think of when we think of following Jainism, especially among the youth, youth in the crowd, you know. Um, and so by a show of hands, uh, who here is, um, oh, if you do the next slide. And so who here um, practices a Jain diet right now? Is there anyone that practices like a pure Jain diet? Um, okay, and there's a few hands. Um, is anyone vegan here? Okay, so there's a few there as well. Um, and so, you know, it doesn't mean that like I think the youngsters would uh, would recognize. But the question I often get is like, okay, so you're vegan, but you also eat Jain, right? And um, and so to answer that question, it's we want to get into why we do either either lifestyle, you know? So um, who knows why Jains? Do not eat root vegetables. Like um, someone that you know, you can just guess. Like someone who's not a Jane scholar, you know, who wants to just guess um, why uh, Jane's don't eat root vegetables? Would you know? Because we know it has a lot of microorganisms. Microorganisms. That's right. That's, that's a good guess. That's a that's a good answer. Uh, does anyone else have any um, answers? It might be multiple answers. You know. Does anyone want to guess? Um, you know, whenever I ask someone this, people give me few answers. One is like. You know, there's bugs in the ground, so we don't eat root vegetables, right? So I've heard that answer a lot, right? Um, I've heard another answer where it's like, um, the root vegetables make your blood get warmer, you know, like the goon birthday, uh, you know, like, I think my, my auntie, or my master, someone told me that once, you know, like in India. And so there's a lot of like, guesses on why root vegetables we don't eat, and these all might be true as well. But the Jain reason why we don't eat root vegetables is for ahimsa. And um, there's a word for it, it's uh, anankai, right? And we say that root vegetables has infinity amount of souls in one physical body. And um, so when we talk about onion, garlic, potato, uh, we believe that it's not just one life that you're taking, you're, you're killing infinity souls, or I guess infinity potential for souls. And, um, you know, I'm sure like, uh, and I will never, 
uh, pretend to say I'm a scholar in Jainism, you know. But um, you know, from the best of my knowledge, this is like the answer that I've been given. And so it is for ahimsa, is why we do a Jain diet. Uh, similarly, for a vegan diet, it's for ahimsa as well. It's for um, you know, for cows, for pigs, for chickens. You know, when we talk about eggs. And so when I think of a vegan diet, it affects five cents, four cents organisms, right? Uh, with root vegetables, it affects you know one cents, two cents organisms as well. At the end of the day, they're both very respectful, and I would never say one or the other, you know. And so a lot of vegans make that mistake of saying this diet is better than this diet, you know. And then you know, and then other Jains will be like, no, Jain diet is proper Jainism, veganism is not. What I would say is I think they're both very noble. They're very commendable. If um, if I have a you know person that eats pure Jane at my house, I would provide them with pure Jane food. I would never disrespect their lifestyle. And similarly, we should think about why vegans do it that way. And if we can help you, then we'll do that for you. You know. So you do the next slide. And so um, I found this uh, slide just off Google. All I had to search was how to grow a potato, and this picture came up. <laughs> and so um, you know the reason I'm showing this is there's a scientific reasoning that like uh, that backs up Jainism. And so when you cut a potato in half, right? And so it actually says it right here. Here's the recipe for growing potatoes. You cut it in half, um, you know, and make sure it has like two roots in it, and then you put it in the ground, right? And then overnight, these potatoes will grow into new potatoes. And so that kind of you know follows the theory of why you know we don't eat root vegetables because you can cut it in half and they'll grow another potato. You know, there's no other you know fruits or vegetables that act the way that these root vegetables do. And yeah, yeah, go to the next slide. And uh, these are all the foods that will regrow from your kitchen scraps. Once again, this is just a Google image. You know, I didn't have to search Jainism for this. But right here, you can see all the Jain foods that we don't eat. We have garlic right here, we have ginger, we have onion, sweet potato, regular potato. So right off the bat, these are all the stuff that Jainism says not to, says to avoid. And I'm just showing you based off like the scientific, you know, aspect of it. You know, next slide. Um, so veganism for North Americans. Um, there's a few benefits that this vegan lifestyle has for James in America. Um, the first one is that um, the American definition of vegetarianism, it includes eggs. It also includes honey. So you probably noticed like you were maybe like, I think the best example is the Morning Star burgers, right? They'll say a vegetarian on it, right? The, the vegetarian patties. You order it, but then you see it has eggs in it. But they call it vegetarian. And you're wondering, oh, okay, this is not vegetarian, you know? But like in America, in North America, that is the actual technical definition. And so it has eggs in it, it has honey in it. And as you know in Jainism, we don't eat eggs, we don't eat honey either. And um, another thing is uh, cheese. When you eat cheese, a lot of it has rennet in it. Um, I don't know, y'all might have heard that word rennet, you know, and like people that practice more pure Jainism, they avoid certain cheeses because it has rennet in it. And um, I believe rennet is uh, just an animal product from pigs. I think it's made from the in intestines of pigs or Something along those lines, you know, I don't want to misquote it, but uh, it is considered meat, you know? Cops. Hmm? It's from cops. From cats, okay, there we go. And so that's like another thing that, you know, cheese you have to watch out for if you're following it. But if you like ask a lot of like modern Jains, like they don't even know the difference. They don't care that, okay, it's cheese, so they, you know, we go to, you know, restaurants and we eat that. But, um, you know, according to Jain text, right? And so I pulled this from Wikipedia and I found the most random quote that, you know, that is used the, Back up my position, of course, but uh, it says that a shravika also shouldn't consume the four mahavigai, right? And someone can correct me, but the four perversions, and the four perversions are wine, flesh, which is like meat, butter, and honey. So, you know, if you think about it, wine is alcohol, right? Flesh is meat. It has butter in it, though. That's something we don't talk about, right? Butter and mother ghee, right? We don't talk about butter. And then honey, and that's a lot of things that, you know, James, we don't eat honey either. Um, and you know, the, the greatest thing about veganism is that it actually excludes honey as well. Because we consider, vegans consider honey an animal product. You know, it's a byproduct of an animal, and you know, a lot of bees are killed from it. So vegans, they avoid honey. They avoid eggs as well. They avoid rennet. So all these like hidden animal products, you know, like someone will forward a link that, oh, this has uh, an animal hidden ingredient in it, we can't eat it. Well, as a vegan, you already know not to eat it. It's already implied. If something says vegan, you know it is 100% plant-based, it is 100% you know, non-animal. And so that's like the benefit for veganism in North America. So for all genes to consider. You know, go to the next slide. So 
this is a silly slide. We all love kaka, right? We all love chai, right? And um, so although it's silly, I know a lot of people that act like this is like crazy. To me, it's crazy, but like people love chai so much, right? That they're like, I can go vegan, but I cannot change my chai. Like chai is one thing. That's my compromise. No, I'm no way, you know. And so uh, in the silliness of, of it, there is a, a lot of alternatives that you can use to make the chai, and it would taste just as fine. If you go to the next slide. So I think the most uh, popular milk that, uh, that I think most Jains agree upon or vegans agree upon is Ripple milk. And um, you know, pretty much it's the closest to real milk it gets. It has like a creamy flavor to it, creamy texture. Um, it's a, you know green peas? It's actually made from green peas, so it's green pea milk. Um, and so I think this is like the, what people consider the best alternative. You can make it with chai and it'll taste just as great. Um, you know what in Malai? You can engender in Malai as well because that's like creamy texture, you know? Uh, I know in my family, we love almond milk. That is, we do, like, in our fridge, we'll always have almond milk, no matter what. If we don't have it, it's an emergency. It's just like a shiracha sauce and ketchup, you know, the things that we need in our house. We need almond milk. And so, uh, so almond milk also is a great with chai. And, um, you know, ripple milk is, of course, the, uh, you know, if you're transitioning <laughs> someone, if you're interested in trying it out, I would definitely recommend that brand. Uh, okay, next slide. Uh, speaking of milk, uh, there are a lot of types of vegan milk. And so on this uh, graph right here, there's eight types of plant-based milk. Uh, I'm just gonna call it dairy-free because uh, that's like what they use in the grocery store. And uh, you know, there was a time where it used to be only at Whole Foods where you can find this milk, but now you can go to Kroger, H-E-B, Randall's, I mean like just mainstream, and like they'll have like six or seven aisles just for these plant-based milks. And they'll have like hybrids, you know? And you know, so we, like right here we got soy milk, rice milk, hemp milk, oat milk. And then on the bottom we have almond milk, hazelnut milk, coconut milk, and cashew milk. And uh, the beauty about this, and you can see the description underneath, every milk has its own taste to it, it has its own texture to it. So, you know, maybe one milk will work good with chai, right? Another milk will be good for cooking. Uh, another milk will be good for cereal. You know, one milk will be good for uh, smoothies. And so it's, you know, I love to experiment myself. I, I just love going out there. So every week I'll purchase a new milk just to try it out, see how it tastes, you know. Um, and, you know, I, I realized for me, soy, almond, I can do all like really good in me. Uh, some have like really good protein, some have like low calories, low protein. Um, and so there's a lot of benefits to that. And then a few extra milks that aren't mentioned here that I've recently discovered is banana milk. So that's a thing. Banana milk is a new thing that come out, and it tastes, in my opinion, it tastes really good. It has like a sweet aftertaste. It's really good for like protein shakes and all that. Uh, another one is macadamia milk, and you know, made from macadamia nuts. And when you think of macadamia, you think of dessert and cookies, right? Macadamia. And so this milk is very sweet. It's a very sweet, very delicious milk as well. Um, and then there's like mixed hybrid milk. So it'd be like half almond, half hazelnut milk, and they're all like really good in my opinion. Um, here to the next slide. Um, here's another, uh, I call it a life hack, right? And this is once again for your kids, you know, that love to eat cookies and all that. So interestingly, Oreos are vegan. And so a lot of people don't know that because like when they advertise, they advertise with milk, right? You're gonna get milk. But this is actually uh, vegan, so you can eat Oreos, has no eggs, no milk, no dairy in it. And so it's a very great, you know, still unhealthy, by the way, very unhealthy, but it is uh, <laughs> very tasty, you know? So you go to the next slide. Uh, so reading nutrition facts, um, so there's a stereotype that all vegans know how to cook, right? Uh, they're like very good cooks at home, they know how to substitute this with that, you know. Uh, I feel like I break that stereotype because I can't cook anything. <laughs> I wish I knew, but I have zero cooking experience. And so for me, it is ordering out, and, um, and I learned very early on that it's very easy to order vegan, um, and like reading nutrition facts. And so we can do the next slide. So right here, when you look at a, a product, right, you turn it to the back. And as you normally would do as a vegetarian, like, okay, does it have fish, does it have meat, does it have eggs? Um, the beauty about dairy products is it's an allergen, right? And so according to like the, the law and the regulations, all allergens have to be listed at the bottom. Where it says contains here, it has to be listed there. So like in this example, you'll see that this product has milk in it and eggs in it. And so right away, you know that this isn't vegan, you can't eat it. Um, and so it's always found at the bottom. Uh, they'll say milk in it, a lot of fish, a lot of eggs, a lot of meat. Um, it won't have honey. So that is like, the, the, unfortunately, if you're looking for honey and if you're at that level of uh, you know, being, you know, being a vegan, you want to 
avoid honey, you would have to go through the actual ingredients for that. But everything else will be found at the bottom. So I can look at something in a minute, and like within 10 seconds, I know if I can eat it or not. Um, also, this doesn't apply to international food items. So if you go to like an Asian market or Indian grocery store, uh, it might not have it at the very bottom. So then you would have to read the ingredients. So, you can start. Um, so Indian food. Um, there's three foods that make Indian food non vegan and this will be like a, like a miniature quiz. I'm sure anyone can answer it very easily. Uh, there's paneer, there's dai, and there's ghee. Those are it. If you can eliminate those three challenges, your Indian food is vegan completely. And so uh, we're going to have a little quiz. Uh, what do you think you can substitute paneer with to make it vegan? Tofu. Tofu. There we go. Easy. Tofu. So when follow paneer, you make it tofu, right? Um, oh, I guess the quiz. So I'm not supposed to be answer yet. And then, uh, what about uh, ghee? What can you replace ghee with to make it ghee? Coconut oil. Coconut oil. There we go. Um, Y'all, a lot of people might be concerned. You might have read the articles, you know, that coconut oil is bad for you, right? It has unsaturated fats or something, right? So, um, my answer to that would be um, everything in limitation is good. So, the way they make it sound online, it's like scary, right? Oh my god, coconut oil is the worst thing you can eat, right? The Harvard professor said. But um, you know, I've done some research. It's not as bad if you eat it in limitation. Uh, but they also have alternatives. They have olive oil. They have vegan butter as well. And they have uh, peanut oil. That's what we use at my house. And so there's a uh, substitute. And then finally, there's dai. This is like uh, eating chaat, you know, eating uh, sev puri, serving of, you know, what is it, uh, rasmalai, things like that. So what would you substitute dai with? Yeah. So dai means yogurt, right? And so this vegan yogurt. That's it. So almond milk based yogurt or soy milk based yogurt. Um, and so we go to the next slide. And there we go. So I already answered the questions, but paneer would be tofu. We do the next slide. Uh, ghee would be coconut oil. And then the final slide is dai would be vegan milk, vegan yogurt. And that's what it would be. Um, we go to the next slide. So with vegan, we always talk about like food. There's a huge emphasis with food. And often, and honestly, that is the biggest thing because we eat three times a day, right? So if you're trying to live a plant-based lifestyle, you're thinking about food. But veganism is a lifestyle. It's not just a food. It applies to clothing. It applies to like um, everything, you know, everything about it, the products you purchase, you know? And so when it comes to like clothing, and I think a lot of us know this already, but it's surprisingly not as common as you think it is. But uh, as James, we have to avoid leather, right? We don't use leather because leather is made from, you know, um, from animal, right? Different leathers are made from different animals. Uh, we have to avoid silk, right? Silk is something that we shouldn't as James because, I mean, I remember I read an article that one clothing of silk kills thousands of, like, silkworms, you know? So as James, we, we shouldn't wear silk either. Um, and, like, I remember, like, when last time I went to India, like, I think my, uh, I don't want to call out who, someone in my family is like, oh, I got a nice silk sari, you know? And they're they're proud of it, like wow, it's silks, you know, or I bought a new car that has silk seats in it, you know, or leather seats. But uh, you know, all these things we we want to avoid because it causes harm to other animals. Um, and finally, fur and wool, uh, even wool, which um, you know, it's like just like the the wool from sheep, right, that we get, it still is a product of an animal, right? And so whenever you think of a system that uses animals for profit, you have to expect abuses. So um, you know, even these sheep that are you know you know, kept, they're probably contained in certain areas. They're not given a free life, you know? So I think they won't avoid all of that. Uh, one thing about me is I've recently, after I became vegan with the food, I've uh, started <laughs> avoiding all of this. And so even when I bought my new car, which I like, you probably saw the yellow car outside, you know, that I love to drive around. But even that car, before I purchased it, I made sure that it didn't have leather seats in it. <laughs> because, you know, that's something that you would have, that's a guilt that you would have to live with. That, okay, at least one or two cows were killed for me to drive this car, you know? Um, at home, um, I know like all of us, we all wear belts. All the men, gentlemen, we all wear belts, right? Every day almost. And if you go to like a store, you'll see that 99% uh, of the belts are made of leather. And you would think that, okay, there's no way to avoid it, right? That's just a part of life. Even with like shoes, right? It just has leather, you know, maybe like 10% leather. And so we just kind of accept it for life. But uh, the good thing is in recent years, it's become very easy to buy. Uh, non-leather belts, non-leather shoes, and um, you can just go on Amazon and purchase it all. And I know for me, I, uh, I bought like a, a few fake crocodile skin belts. And so they look fashionable, they're like, wow, they look so nice, but you know, it's fake, right? It's, uh, they call it like, uh, like faux leather, you know, fox leather. 
and um, it was just like fake, fake crocodile skin, fake shoes, fake everything, and it looks just as great. And it's made from like synthesized material. You know, um, you go know, next slide. And then uh, finally, there's a, a few apps, smartphone apps. We live in this uh, in the age where information is a lot more accessible. You know, you don't have to like, go to libraries to get this information. But they have a few smartphone apps which you can use to like maybe consider a more plant-based lifestyle. You know, um, Happy Cow is like probably the most popular app. I think if you go to like a vegan restaurant, they'll have like the sticker in the front entrance. You know. So pretty much Happy Cow is you, uh, it has like a search bar, right? And then you just click it and it'll show all the vegetarian restaurants in your area. So it's not just for vegans, it's for vegetarians as well. If you're in Europe, for example, you're going to like Greece or something, you can't find a single thing vegetarian there, you can always use this app and find it. So this works around the world. Um, and then the, the second app is Cruelty Cutter, which you can actually use to like scan a barcode and it'll tell you if it's cruelty free or not. And um, cruelty free, technically is a little bit different from vegan uh, and like a technical definition and pretty much it shows that it wasn't tested on animals and so a lot of these like makeup and a lot of cosmetics a lot of these products they tested on animals which end up dying of course right like 99% of the time they end up dying and so if you want to avoid using certain cosmetics you can just scan the barcode and you can find a substitute um, and for me it was a very easy thing you know because um, like I'll buy toothpaste you know like in bulk probably you know and just keep it in the house and so when you're going out to purchase it, you'll just find which one is uh, you know, cruelty free and just buy that. And it's very easy, this is like mainstream as well, so you don't have to go to a <laughs> special shop to find these things. You know, you can just go to a regular grocery store or CVS pharmacy and find that. And so, it makes like. Um, and it, that's kind of like how it looks when you like scan a car, like scan the deodorant, right? And it says it's not cruelty free. So right away, as James, we're trying to, you know, avoid hurting animals, we know right away that we shouldn't be using this product. And so that's kind of how it looks. Be the next slide. And then finally, don't, don't be disheartened. You know, um, there's a statistic that I think 70% of people that try veganism end up going back, which is like to me, it's like the saddest thing. It's like a heartbreaking thing. You know, this they want to be vegan, they want to help out, but then when they do it, they find out it's like very difficult, or they'll find out something they love isn't vegan, and then it causes them to be like, okay, this is not for me. You know, maybe I'll do it next time. And so. You know, veganism is more of a title, it's like a label, you know. Really, it's whatever we can do to help, we do it, you know, it's, it's a spectrum, right? So if you can maybe drink a little bit less, you know, buy less gallons of milk at home, right? That could be something, you know. Maybe you'll say, okay, I'll avoid cheese, maybe just for one week at a time. If anything you can do will be helping saving like animal lives. So it's not like you have to be fully vegan on one day, you know. You just do whatever you can, and over time, as you get better, um, you know, you can maybe consider going further and further. You know, you just have to push yourself. And just like in Jainism said, right? remember that breath slide I showed earlier? It's like taking your breath almost. You just have to like take a vow that I'm not going to do this, and you can do it that way. And so, uh, yeah, so don't ever be disheartened. Always keep trying to push yourself, because at the end of the day, we want to live, you know, good Jain lives, you know, and this is one way to do it. So, and that's all. Thank you. Thank you.